Testing. Oh. Testing. Okay, thank you everyone who's here for Sabbath School. Um, and for those of you watching online at home, it's a blessing to be here to worship God. And let's start by worshiping God in song. So if we could all turn our hymns to chapter 3, 388. Let's sing some songs of praise to God. Th chap uh, 388. 388. 388. Don't forget the Sabbath. I'll need your guys' help in helping me praise God. Singing is not one of my gifts, but as long as I can praise God, praise the Lord with all I got, I know he'll be pleased. So let's start. Don't forget the Sabbath. Okay. Oh, 388. 388. Yeah. Yeah, 388. No, no, 388, Miss Water. 3828. 388. Yep, 88. Okay. Oh, don't forget the Sabbath. Don't forget the Sabbath. This is the only song I I'm, I'm quite good at. Okay, ready? Are you there, Miss Doctor Waterhouse? Okay, ready? Oh. Forget the Sabbath. The Lord our God had blessed. Of all the weeks, the brightest, of all the week, the blebest. It brings repose from labor. It tells of joy divine. Its beams of light descending with heavenly beauty shine. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Keep the Sabbath holy and worship Him today. Who said to his disciples, I am the living way. And if we meekly follow our Savior here below, he'll give us of the fountain whose streams eternal flow. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Day of sacred pleasure, its golden hours well spent. In thankful hymns to Jesus, the children's dearest friend. O gentle, loving Savior, how good and kind Thou art. How precious is Thy promise to dwell in every heart. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Amen, amen. Any requests? Any, anybody have any request of song to sing? Again, no? Okay. We'll begin because I'm impressed by God to begin uh, the Sabbath school. So I believe Uncle Sonny is teaching the Ilicano class. If those want to go and join him in the Ilicano class, or you're welcome to stay here in our English class. Uh, again, I just want to say thank you for those watching at home and those in, in attendance. 
on this blessful Sabbath day. We're studying our quarterly. It's managing for the master till he comes, uh, the quarterly for uh, January and February and March. So we're, we're in the lesson of the tithing contract. The tithing contract and before we start can i please have a quick word of prayer father in heaven i just want to come before you lord to tell you lord that i am not worthy father but through you through jesus father i i can and i pray father that you be my mouthpiece that you bring people here today father to hear your words and the blessing in, in keeping the sabbath holy we are on holy ground father so i pray that our conversation be good in your sight. Give everyone here in attendance and at home watching online the Holy Spirit, Father, that we may commune and give you praise. And all these things I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Um, so the tithing contract, I found it pretty interesting that the author used contract. It's, uh, I would say, more of a covenant, but it's, it's the same thing, a contract, a tithing contract. Uh, the memory text for this week is found in Malachi chapter 3 verses 10 and the malachi chapter 3 verse 10 and the memory text reads bring all the tithings into the storehouse that there may be food in my storehouse and try me now in this says the lord of hosts if i will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be enough room for you to receive it and in reading this we'll actually go through the lessons and the lessons will that we'll study, we'll talk about what is that storehouse, um, the blessings in giving back to God, and so forth. So, bring all the tithings into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me. Here we, we see that the Lord is basically encouraging us, telling us to try me. Um, come out in faith, and I will bless you. And I found it interesting that I mentioned this a couple of times that the windows of heaven, for those who are in attendance, we're in um, the tithing contract quarterly. Thank you guys for joining. God answers prayers. Amen, brother. I miss you. I miss you too. Praise God. Good to see you. Amen. Um, yeah, praise God. Auntie Dolores, you look good to see you. Praise God. Oh, it's feeling so down and out. But praise God. God answers prayers. But um, so, yeah, we're in the tithing contract. And um, it starts off in Genesis 14, talking about Abram and how Abram went to rescue Lot. And he, he brought 300 men from his household. He went, uh, defeated the kings, took Lot um, out of hostage uh, and brought him. And um, the king of Salem, which is Melchizedek, greeted Abraham, blessed Abraham. Abraham, he wanted to give Abraham offerings, but Abraham refused. Instead, Abraham tithed, gave him a tithe of all his, possess his possessions and the spoils of his war. So, Abraham rescues Lot. He gives uh, a tenth, a tithe of all his possessions to Melchizedek. Um, immediately after Abraham's tithing experience, um, the Lord tells him, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am thy shield, your exceedingly great reward. And it's interesting that with tithing, you, we kind of see God's protection when, when, with, with, that goes hand in hand with tithing. God is saying, I'm, I'm your shield, Abraham, and, and your exceedingly great reward. And the Lord is uh, telling Abraham to not be worried, for he's his provider and his protector. Greg. Yes, yes, Dr. Waterhouse. Yeah, the, the number 10 is interesting because it's used as a symbol in the ancient world. And the, the 10 represents the whole. Mm. You know, God owns everything. So the, when you pay a tithe, that's to indicate that he owns everything. So when you read about the 10 virgins, uh, that represents all the Christians. Amen. Or, or the 10 you, commandments. Right. Amen. You know, so that's, it's, the, the symbol is interesting. Yeah, amen. Beautiful. And we'll see this as Dr. Waterhouse pointed out how uh, tenth and tithing in the dictionary actually tithing uh, the tenth tithing means tenth and it derived from biblical um, our biblical understanding of it. So we'll we'll get into that study. Um, Ellen Ellen. So God actually Moses after Abram we see that Moses establishes in the law. We'll find that in Deuteronomy 
right before the children of Israel enters into the promised land that uh, Moses tells the children of Israel that you shall truly tithe all the increases of your gain that the field produce year by year and that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. So here we see it start um, the first account starting with Abraham. But this is interesting. Miss Ellen White wrote, men were required to offer to God gifts for religious purposes before the defiant uh, definite system was given to Moses, even as far back as the days of Adam. So we know that tithing actually was in the beginning with um, Adam, but it's recorded in the Bible starting with Abraham. And then obviously with Moses at Mount Sinai, when he gives the laws, um, it is established. So we'll move on to Sunday's lesson, which is, as Dr. Waterhouse saying, 10, which equals a tithe. The dictionary defines tithe as a tenth part of something or 10%, which is whole. Um, 10 in, 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 with God means he is everything, it's a whole. So at Mount Sinai, it's pointing out the Israelites, everything that, that God blessed them with, they would to give 10% uh, of their income uh, to the Lord, back to the Lord. Uh, the tithing, there is no other minimum the minimum for tithing is 10%. There is nothing. It's just that's how it is. It's, it's 10, 10%. There's, um, that's the minimum. And so we will read, if I can have a volunteer to read Genesis 14, uh, verses 18 to 20. Genesis 14, 18 to 20. Oh, brother. Yeah, Genesis 14. Amen. And Melchizedek, <clears throat> king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he said, Bless him. And he said, Bless, Blessed be Ab Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Um, beautiful. So as we, we, we was talking about earlier, um, Abram went out, saved Lot with uh, his, his 300 men of his household and um, brought, brought Lot out. And the king of Salem, which is Melchizedek, blessed um, Abram. And Abram gave him a tithing of all that he had, the spoils of his war. Um, can I have someone read Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 through 9? Um, Jeremy. For this Melchizedek... King of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, be, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi, who receive the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Amen. So here we see Melchizedek. Um, he neither has beginning or end of life or um, he doesn't have a genealogy. That's not to say that he wasn't made. It's just that the Bible doesn't have um, recorded evidence of his genealogy. Dr. Waterhouse. Well, the thing is, is that uh, Melchizedek didn't become king because his father was king or because he had genealogy for the royalty, but the Holy Spirit had appointed him. So that's the deeper meaning there of uh, he had no father, no mother. Uh, you know, was it after David had killed Goliath, why Saul asked, well, who are you? And the, the real question is, well, where's your genealogy? How, co how can a little boy kill this giant? You know, yeah. so, and and we also know that Melchizedek was, was a symbolization of Jesus because the, the priesthood of Jesus comes from the line of Mel, and, Melchizedek. And, and then Jerusalem is important because, you know, city of peace. Yes, yeah, city of peace. And he was and, the. And that's where the temple was situated. Amen. Amen. So here we see that Paul is writing. And you know what's interesting is because Genesis is the first account that we see that tithing is mentioned in the Bible, and Hebrews chapter 7 is the last. 
that we see. And in Hebrews chapter 7, we see it reflecting back on the first account with, with Abram, showing that tithing didn't begin with, with at Mount Sinai, but it began further back. And what's interesting is about this whole thing is that Abraham is paying tithing to Melchizedek, who is neither a Levi or neither, uh, you know, he's a mysterious figure, indicating to the Hebrew nation that that tithing goes back before this system that Dr. Waterhouse was talking about with service to the temple and the Levitical priests that was serving in the temple. So it goes back to, to this figure, Melchizedek, who's a symbol of Christ. He doesn't have genealogy, beginning of days. He's a king and he's a priest. Jesus is our, our king and he's our high priest. So here's being illustrated that God is trying to teach us that it goes further back before the establishment of the law in Deuteronomy with Moses, that, it, that, that Abraham is actually giving tithe to someone outside of that Levitical order um, that wasn't a Levi. So what was Abraham's response to meeting Melchizedek? We kind of went over that. He, he, he um, offered a tenth of his spoils to Melchizedek. What does this teach us about how far back in history the practice goes? It goes from the beginning. It goes from the beginning. It's, it's, it's like the Sabbath. You will find it. Even though there's no account of it, we know that it was further back, even before Abram. But recorded starts with Abraham. So this practice goes back and back. Um, here also we hear uh, the Hebrew story. Melchizedek nor Christ were of the tribe of Levi. So the tithings preceded the following selection of the Levites. Tithing is not exclusive, um, a Jewish custom, and did not originate with the Hebrews at Sinai. So we know this, 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 not, this is not particularly pertaining just to the Israelite people, or it, it's for everyone that, that's, that loves God, and, 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 and it was established before them. Um, can I have someone read? Genesis chapter 28, 13 to 14. Genesis uh, 28, chapter 13 to 14. <clears throat> Excuse me. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and to the south. And in you and in your seed, all the family of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. Amen, Uncle. Um, can someone read Genesis 28, verses 20 to 22? Genesis 20. Oh, yeah. Go, yeah. Go ahead, Uncle. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and keep me in, in this way, that I am going, and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on, so that I come back to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone, which I have set as a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that you gave me, I will surely give a tent to you. So just a backstory: we all know about Jacob running away from home. His brother Esau is angry at him. He's looking to, to take his life from him. He runs away, goes into the wilderness after taking the birthright. Um, he ends up sleeping on a, on a rock made like a pillow. Ends up having this vision of God, uh, of, of a ladder descending from earth to heaven with angels flying to and fro from earth to heaven. And he sees um, God. He hears God. Uncle Dennis. This is also before... Uh... Uh, Moses. Yeah. Way before Moses. Good point. Good point, uncle. And then here we see that the response to Jacob, God is telling him that, so Jacob makes a vow saying, if, if God, if you, you'll be with me, keep me where I'm going and, and give me food and clothing, then I'm with you. I'm with you a hundred percent. I'll follow you. I'll give back to you. Um, I'm with you on this. So like uncle pointed out, it's, it's even, before Moses, and we see the tithing with Jacob. So a question for you guys, family, is what did God promise to do for Jacob? Obviously, he promised to bless Jacob, to be with him, to supply for him. 
And what was Jacob's response to God? I'm all in, Lord. I'm all in. I'm, I'm for you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do what you ask, Lord. You know, I'm, I, I, I'm with you. I, 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 I'm stepping out in faith. I, I trust you. So, as we just read, the author uh, Esau is uh, going after him. He sees it, like I, I just mentioned, and the Lord shall be my God, and all that you give me, I will surely give you a tenth, Lord. Jacob's response to God in Genesis 28. Okay, so a question for you guys, family, is why is it important to understand that tithing, like the Sabbath, was not something that originated in the ancient Israelites' legal or even religious system? Why is it important to know that it goes, it dates back before Moses setting up the system, the laws? Why is it important for us to know that about tithing? God instituted it way back from the beginning of time. Amen. And it's documented, but we always think it's always oh, just an Israelite thing. Everybody is thinking a Sabbath is a, a Jewish thing. It's not. Sabbath was the same time as tithing. Amen. The beginning, the seventh day. Amen. Amen, Uncle. So just as Uncle said, so it's instituted before and showing, indicating that it's not only for Hebrew culture. God didn't only establish it for them and their system, but it's for all mankind who loves God. Uncle Dennis. Also that, uh, you know, the, the Ten Commandments was that when uh, Moses was Hebrew, right? So the Ten Commandments is not only for the Hebrews, it's for all because God who created him, created you and me. So it's all for everyone. We're all actually the children of God. If you accept his teaching and, and, and honor him and be obedient to him, and you're accepted to the kingdom of God. So uh, it goes all the way back, even all the way to Adam and Eve, you know. And uh, God never leave out anything. He, he, <gasps> It's just that, you know, the way it was teach, taught to the people that, uh, you know, has, uh, you know, have false prophets and so forth. And people that believe in their own way. But if they really look and search, it goes all the way back. Way back. Amen. Amen, Uncle. Um, beautifully answered. Um, another question is, is basically just touching up on the last one is what message should we or who live after the cross take from this? What should we, what should we, what can we take? You know, I, I like how Sister Lani always says when she, when she studies the Bible, she wants to make it practical. How can we make the Bible practical for how we're living today? And how can tithing be practical for us in, in a sense of understanding that it started in the Garden of Eden? And, you know, we obviously know that God owns everything. He doesn't, he doesn't need it. But isn't there a blessing with it? Isn't it teaching us to trust God more? God will open the windows of heaven. Um, I, I've had a, a, a talk with one of my coworkers who was a former Seventh-day Adventist and who he apostatized, he left the church. And he was just, you know, giving all his concerns about the church. I tried my best, prayed to God, tried my best to, to reason with him and, and to show him the love of God. But one thing he had a trouble with, that it was tithing. And he was like, you know, I think man wrote it. And, uh, you know, I don't think it's it's something that is necessary and and and... And, and so forth. And at the time, honestly, family, I, I really didn't have the right answer, but I prayed. And all I said is, you know, even if you give your tithing, and I know there's some churches that are misrepresenting, uh, misusing the money and whatnot, that doesn't mean that God won't still bless you. It's not like God is looking down on you and saying, oh, you gave it to that, that church. Uh, they did something else with the money. I'm not going to bless you. You'll still receive the blessings of God because you're giving it from your heart. But um, you know, understanding that giving from your heart is important to God, and it teaches us something valuable. Yes, Dr. Waterhouse. My personal testimony, uh, my father was not a Seventh-day Adventist, and uh, one night he couldn't sleep because of all the problems that were weighing on him in the place he worked. And uh, my mother said, well, you should pay tithe. And he said, well, what church should I pay tithe to? He, he belonged to a congregational church. His mother was a, a faithful Methodist, but uh, my mother said, well, the church you feel that you should give it to, he ended up giving to the Seventh-day Adventist church. Amen. Immediately when he paid tithe, his problems disappeared. 
Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I know um, I, I got to, to participate in an ASI convention once, and I was telling my wife that uh, I was up there for Souls West Bible School um, giving a testimony to these, these lay workers, layman workers, and they would tithe. I mean, just generous amounts for, for the colleges, for the world, for the church in whole. So whatever college would come up, plead with them what they would need. These people, Seventh-day Adventists, would just give generously. And it, 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 was just, it was just unbelievable, you know, because God does bless us, family, when you give from, you know. He says, he's literally saying in Malachi, test me, try me. And I understand some, some of us are living on fixed income. I understand some of us don't have much. But God is literally saying, step out in faith and try me. There's a blessing with it. So I tried my best to tell that man that, you know, you, you give your tithes to God and God will bless you regardless. That's whatever that person, you know, does, it's on him. But we'll get to that and giving money to the correct church and God's storehouse. What is, the, what is God's storehouse now in this day? We'll, 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 we'll find that um, right now on Mondays, Monday's lesson, God's storehouse. So we read Malachi. Let me read it again because it's, it's a beautiful promise that I think we, we really should believe in. And it's Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring all the tithings into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Um, remember now, back in, in, in the Old Testament, the storehouse was at first in, with, with the children of Israel. It was the tent where the sanctuary was. It was the tent. So where, wherever they went in the wilderness for that 40 years and they established the tent, that's where it was. That was the storehouse. Then when King David in Shiloh, when he established that tent in Shiloh, it became um, the storehouse for God. And then obviously when Solomon built the temple in Jerusalem, I, I believe it's Solomon who built the temple in Jerusalem, then it became the temple in Jerusalem. So the storehouse of God, where God's dwelling was, where God was, was his storehouse. So with the people, uh, the, the children of Israel back then, it was the, it was the, temp, it was the tent, the, the, the tent for the sacrifices and whatnot. And then in Jerusalem, it's the temple in Jerusalem. That was the storehouse. Um, it's important to know that. Um, so what can we learn about these verses of our tithing? What can we learn from basically these verses? When you read these verses, family, what, 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 what do you get from this? What do you, what, what, what Dr. Waterhouse? You know, when the uh, Israelites came to the land of Canaan, the first place that they took was Jericho. And Jericho was a tie to the, to the Lord. You know, that was the first city of the promised land that opened up the gate to the promised land. So that was, uh, the tithe and, uh, uh, Achan, uh, you know, stole the garment. You know, the tithe is, the Bible brings out that the tithe is holy to the Lord. So everything there was holy to the Lord. Jericho and, and Achan broke that. He broke thing. that. And, they, and I, was just, I was just reading that too, Dr. Arros, and he ended up losing his, his life for that. And it was a stain on Israel, you know? Yeah, it was a stain, exactly. And, and it shows the importance, I think, Dr. Arros. It shows the importance on how, like you said, it's holy unto God. And someone, Achan, lost his life for stealing, for taking the, I think it was the Babylonian garment. I, 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 yeah, the Babylonian garment, and he took it, and, and he, he lost his life. So it was serious to God about um, tithing and, and, and giving to God. And, um, you know, I, 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 I want to read this. Yet God's blessing is not one-dimensional. To emphasize, for instance, that the accumulation of material assets as a blessing at the expense of everything else is very narrow-minded. So I know we like to think, okay, I'm going to give my tithes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get money back. I'm going to, you know, it's, it's all about, you know, money, 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 and understand. But with Abraham, when we studied Abraham, Jesus said that I am thy exceeding, I am thy shield. I am thy reward. There's a protection element when you give your tithing. Like how uh, uh, Pastor touched on it last week, maybe you know, your tire, God will protect your tire from blowing or he will protect something that, you know, won't go wrong throughout the week that will help you, that will prevent you from maybe overspending. But there's different ways that God will bless us. It's not necessarily to do with, um, you know, you're going to get rich off of it, but you have God's protection as how God told Abraham, which is, which is beautiful. So to think 
that you know uh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm I'm gonna gain more and more. It's you know it's a one dimensional approach. We should we should think that the overall God will bless us overall, brother in the back. That's the difference in man's religion and God's religion. God said that tithing. Why did why did Cain kill Abel? Tithe. It's all about tithe. He didn't accept. He uh, Abel. I mean Cain gave what he thought. Yeah, he gave his not fruit. what God wanted. Yeah, his his offering. And then and then you try to look at all of these guys that prosperity preaching, preaching. Give, give, and you'll be so you'll have all thousands of dollars and yeah, prosperity yeah. preachers. You're right. You want to yeah. know something? Since I came into the church and I learned, this is my personal testimony. I'm a painter and I work in a construction. And since I became a Seventh-day Adventist and I learned about the tithing, I have never, ever, 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 ever worried about work or where I'm going to get my next meal. God has, I would run out down to the end. I'm like, oh, no, I don't know what I'm going to do now. I haven't had a call for two weeks. The very next day, I get five calls. Amen. And then I'm busy again, and it, it, it's all about, it, I faithfully give my tithe because it's not mine, and I know I'm going to, you know, I'm not expected to get rich. God provided me forever, Amen. and I'm not wanting, and I, that's, that's my testimony, and that's why I tell people for tithe. And another thing was, Ellen White also said, <clears throat> it doesn't matter. We give our tithe, because I had this thing like, man, our, our, our church is apostatizing it. Oh, why do I want to give my tithe to them? And then I was reminded about it's not my problem. I give my tithe, God will take care of it. He wants to be he wants my faithfulness. What what these other people do in it is their kuleana. It's their problem. If they're gonna use them right, God is gonna bless them. And if they're not gonna use it right, because we know things are going wrong and there's where there's lots of money, there's corruption. Amen. It's not our kuleana to worry about. Give what God says, and we good. Amen, brother. Powerful testimony. Beautiful. Beautiful. The meaning of God's blessing is in evidence by salvation, happiness, a peace of mind, and God always doing what is best for us. Always, when we are blessed by God, we are obligated to share those blessings with the less fortunate. We have been blessed in order to be, ble be a blessing to others. <laughs> to be a blessing to others, indeed. Though through us, God is able to extend his blessings everywhere. So we'll get into that. We'll know that obviously Jesus, uh, God doesn't need our money. He owns everything. It's, it's, it's for the work. It's for the three angels message. You, you want to know how to reach the world? Give your tithes. Give your tithes, especially as, as us for being Seventh-day Adventists. We're a worldwide church. So places like maybe Haiti or, or Africa or in Europe or places that, that, we, we can go, missionaries can go and do the God's work and spread the, the three angels message. We can help supply that. We can help by giving our tithes for God's, uh, God's people and get, getting the, the world to know God's love. So even though specific directions are not given in a text, the people knew, like we mentioned, they knew what the storehouse was. Like Dr. Waterhouse said, they knew uh, that it was, it was the, 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 the sanctuary in, in the wilderness or it was the temple in Jerusalem in Jerusalem so they knew but God includes in his directions that there may be food in my house his people understood God's house initially was the sanctuary elaborated the tenth like we talked about later the Israelites the promised land Shiloh and then permanently in Jerusalem so okay so here we we know where God's locations was it was specific places it wasn't just they taking their tides where they wanted to go uh, doing their own thing it was a specific spot where, where God wanted them to, to bring their tithings in. So when we read Deuteronomy chapter 12, uh, verse 5 to 14, I can, I can read this. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 5 to 14. Deuteronomy chapter 12, 5 to 14. But you shall seek the place where the Lord your God chooses out of all your tribes to put his name on his dwelling place. And there you shall go. There you shall take your burnt offerings, your sacrifice, your tithes, and having offered of your hand your vowed offering, your free will offering, and the firstborn of your herd and flock. And there you shall eat before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice in all to which you have put your hands, you and your household, in which the Lord your God has blessed you. You shall not at all do as we are doing here today, every man doing whatever is right in his own eye. 
For as yet you have not come to the rest and the inheritance which the Lord your God is giving you, but you, when you cross over the Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to inherit, and he gives you rest from all your enemies round about so that you dwell in safety, then there will be the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. There you shall bring all, the com all that I command you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, and the the heave offering of which your hand and all your choose offerings which you vow to the Lord, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, and you, your sons, your daughters, your males, your female servants, and the Levites who is within your gates, since he has no portion nor inheritance with you. Take heed to yourself that you do not offer your burnt offerings in every place that you see, but in a place which the Lord chooses in one of your tribes, that you shall offer your burnt offerings, and there you shall do all that I commanded. So here is Deuteronomy, the last message from Moses to the children of Israel before they're entering into the promised land. And Moses is literally telling them that God will choose a spot for you in your inheritance and for you to bring your offerings, to bring your a specific spot to bring your offerings and your tithes. So God is a God of direction and he's real specific. And we see that we can't just, like we was touching upon, bring it to any, any place, but we bring it to where God is, where God wants us to bring it, the storehouse. Um, these verses do not indicate children could use their own uh, dis dissertion as to where their tithing was deposited. What principles can we take from this verse of, um, from these verses for ourselves today? What can we, what principles can we basically take that? So we, we, we was touching upon that family that we need to, to, to bring, bring our tithing to, to, to where God wants us to bring it. And what would happen if we were to just, as a church, all of us bring our tithing to wherever we wanted to? What, what, what would happen? There wouldn't be a church. There wouldn't be a church, you know. Um, so it's important for us to know where our money's going, how God wants us to use it, our, our offerings, our tithes, um, because, yeah, we're, um, it helps to know and not just give your, your, your do, do your own thing that's uh, pleasant in your own eyes. God is real specific. Um, as a member of God's family, we want to understand the practice regarding what to do with tithe. In the biblical narrative, we learned that three times a year, you guys know Passover, Pentecost, the Feast of Tabernacles, the children of Israel would all come from where they're all came from and go to Jerusalem to bring these offerings to God three times a year. They can do it um, whenever they wanted, but the main three was, was Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. They could, they were, they were forced, not forced, but they had to bring it. So God's people were traveling to Jerusalem, bringing their tithes, their offerings, brethren from all over the land of Israel. And if you read, for, um, I, I, I don't want to read it for the sake of time, but if you read 1 Chronicles 31, 11 to 21, it shows specifically what um, what each like Korah, Kor, what they was doing in in regards to the free will offering, to the uh, tithe offering, and how it was a system. How one would guard, would watch the east gate, and make sure they collect all the that, do that. They were faithful steward, stewards, so it was a system even back then of 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 taking care of God's um, tithings, and uh, the. Author points out, in harmony with biblical central storehouse principles, the Seventh-day Adventist church has designed the local conference missions and unions of church as storehouses on the behalf of the worldwide church and from which the ministry is paid. So like I talked about earlier, we're a worldwide church family. Until you go out into America and you see it, how we're all over, and this is God's church, we help fund all these people who are dedicating their lives past... Pastor Puya and, and, and so forth, who are dedicating their lives to God's work. They cannot have no other means of income. We help them. We help them. And we help fund the third angel's message, preaching this to the world. So that's where your money goes. And if you look on your quarterlies behind, you guys can see where, where the Sabbath school quarterly, your funds go to and where it's helping. Um, so imagine if everyone decides to give their tithe to whomever they wanted to at the expense of the church itself. We already kind of went over that. There wouldn't be no church because um, there wouldn't be nothing, you know. Um, what would happen to our church? Why is the, that practice then such a bad idea and contrary to scripture? What would happen? We wouldn't have a church. What is 
that practice then such a bad idea and contrary? I mean, it's simple. Yeah, we, we, need, we need funds. Um, you know, Jesus could easily reach everyone himself, but he chose us to do his work. So we have to help out in his mission and, and um, help by giving back to, to God and to his cause. Um, any comments? Any comments on, 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 on this? Any, anything? It's pretty self-explanatory. It's not really something you can dig deep into finding gold. It's just kind of uh, plain and simple, like how Jesus taught, plain and simple. It's easy to understand. Um, so we know, just a review, tithing started back then. The first um, written account was with Abram. Then we see Jacob and obviously with Moses at Mount Sinai when he gives the laws. Hence, so forth at Jerusalem, at the temple, all the way to now. So it's it's not something that was just created. It was always with, with us, um, f from God. So let's read Leviticus twenty-seven and thirty. Leviticus twenty-seven and verse thirty. Somebody wants to volunteer. Leviticus chapter twenty-seven, verse thirty. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll read. Um, and all the tithes of it of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Numbers 18.21. Behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tithings in Israel as an inheritance in the return for the work which they perform, the work of the tabernacle of meetings. Numbers 18.24. For the tithing of the children of Israel, which they offer up as a heave offering, offering to the Lord, I have given to the Levites as an inheritance. Therefore, I have said to them, among the children of Israel, they shall have no inheritance. So you know that the children of Is, um, the Levites didn't have a portion of, of land to themselves. So they solely had to depend on everyone bringing tithings and offerings to them so they could eat, so they could survive, so they could have a, me a means of living. So here we see that, that God, God is saying the tithing from the children of Israel was to go and support the Levites, support, uh, support the priests, the, the, the ones who, who are doing God's work at the time. So it's interesting because what does God's purpose, what does God's purpose to do with tithing? What does God propose to do with the tithe? What does he propose to do with the tithe? To give to his people who are, who are, who are doing his work. To supply his people. Back then we had the sanctuary, we had the temple. Dr. Waterhouse. You notice that uh, you were mentioning that the Levites... Uh... Their inheritance was the uh, tithe. The Levites represented Christ. All the different tribes, they were given the tribal lands. And the Levites, the Levitical cities were scattered all through Israel because Christ is not in one area, but throughout all his people. Amen. I love how Dr. Waddles, he can just pull gems out from the Bible. That's beautiful. <laughs> you yeah. see Jesus. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Right. Interesting. Beautiful. Um, so, like Dr. Waterhouse said, the, the Levites who did God's work rep represented Jesus. Um, they were they didn't have an inheritance. Their inheritance was the tithing, and then so so on and so forth. And even today, as we touched on with our church, with 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 Pastor Puya, with the different pastors all over, with the different missionary workers, health ministries, the different workers who dedicate their lives to God. They they this is their job. So we help supply that. We help. Um, help the work to push forward to preach to every tribe kindred tongue and people so that god can come and, and rescue us but there's also a blessing there's also a blessing it's not like you give and you you know everything god tells us to do he always blesses us keep the sabbath you get a double portion you're blessed you, you have a peace of mind um you know whatever we eat we have clarity of thought or you know there's always a blessing what i'm trying to say family when god tells us to do something and especially with tithing you, we hear from um, Dr. Waterhouse, his testimony with his dad, brother in the back, his testimony with finding work, myself included, going from Waianae to having my own place in Mililani, and I contribute that to tithing as well as following other things. Now, I don't think we just have to tithe and, oh, I'm going to get all the blessing. We have to continue to follow everything that God tells us to do. But tithing does play a big role in, in, in being blessed by God, not only seeing family that God is going to bless me with money. God is going to. There's, there's, there's different ways that God will bless us, whether peace of mind, whether protection. Let God 
do it. Just let God figure it out and just watch and watch in amazement and record it and see how God works. He says, try me this day. But God creates and operates in systems. He has designed the solar system, the ecosystem, the digestive system, the nervous system, and many more. The tithing system was used by the Leviticus to carry out to care for the tabernacle and, and their support. The modern day equivalent would be those who devote their lives to preaching the gospel. God's tithing system is his chosen means for supporting the ministry. And it has been in use throughout salvation history, supporting such labors with tithes then in funda fund funda funda national, I kind of wrote that wrong, and fundamental to God's work. So, as the author writes, because God owns everything, he obviously doesn't need the money. But because the tithing is his, he tells us what to do with it. And that it is to be used for the support of the gospel ministry. And, to take, and therefore, the need of the ministers are taken care of with God's tithing. Okay, we'll read um, Acts chapter 20, verse 35. I have shown you in every way, Acts chapter 20, verse 35. I have shown you in every way by laboring like this, that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus. And he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. What does this mess? How, what, what's the message here? And how does this relate to the question of tithing? How does giving is better to give for the root? For the love of money is the root of all evil. It's better to give. Okay, Dennis. When you're exercising your faith, you know, when you give, you're exercising your faith. It's a, it's a, it's a good deed. It's, it's, it's a, a form of work, which, which is part of faith. When you give, you, it's action. You're showing how much you care, how much you acknowledge God as God, who owns everything. All you have, all you're given is only one tenth. You have nine tenths, and that nine tenths will carry you far. Amen, amen. Beautiful. Any other comments? Why is it better, Auntie Diane? Uh, by giving your life is, or helping others, it really makes you joy. In like you feel joy by giving it because. I experience when I, I give something, you know, like offering or, or tithes or helping someone. There is something that can, uh, there is something that you receive also. It's not from from the other people, but but God provide us. I mean, giving you these things that you don't expect. Amen. To me, it's really a uh, very important, and it's really true by giving it. Because, because uh, you feel jo you have uh, joy in your heart by giving it. To me, that's my my experience. Amen. Beautiful. I agree. I agree. Auntie Patty. You know, um, <laughs> when when the beginning started, as you say, um, the tent. A tithe was in place, and uh, if and I'm sure you're going to get to it in within this this quarter. Uh, a lot of Christians feel that uh, in the New Testament that the tithes are no longer required. However, my husband and I we've always felt that it was, even though we're not Seventh Day Adventists. And I just believe in my heart that whatever the Lord asks us to do, if we do it, he will bless us. Amen. And I know I can say without a shadow of a doubt that I truly believe that by us tithing all these, I want to say decades, I believe that the Lord has shown himself to be faithful and I'm not standing on any rooftop to blast that, oh, I'm giving tithes. But I'm saying, just like the word said, test me, Amen. try me. Amen. And it is so true. May not come in financial money, 
But I think of my health. I think of, oh my goodness gracious, I think of my marriage, I think of my children, I think of my, my mother. I'm telling you, he is faithful. And I, I just wanted to share. Hey Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. And there is a blessing that comes with that. And um, yes, powerful, beautiful. From tithing, I believe there's a double blessing that comes with it. We are blessed and we are a blessing to someone else. We can give out of what we have been given. God blesses us. See, God blesses us inwardly, giving us peace of mind, clarity, this everything comforts us. And then when we give, we're able to bless someone outwardly who maybe doesn't have nothing. I think of that parable, um, maybe Dr. Watt also, or someone can help me. Is it in uh, Matthew where Jesus says, you did not give me food. You did not clothe me. You did not do this. You, you know, and it was all to do with, with giving. And, and he said, I, I don't remember you. You know, I, I, I don't know you. And it's powerful. Now imagine now, God telling me, I don't know you. That is one of the, that would scare me. And it had to do with giving. It had to do with, with caring. You know, Jesus sat with the sinners. He ate with the, the poor. You know, he was always with them. You know, he comforted them. And we, we can do the same, you know, when we, when we give. Uh, tithing is important because it helps us to establish a relationship of trust with God. We're constantly growing with God. We constantly need to grow with God. And giving our tithe is trusting God. Uh, to take one-tenth of our income and to give it away that technically it already belongs to God. So it, it helps to, uh, it's a true act of faith. Only by exercising it will our faith grow. We have the greatest gift of heaven. Etern of heaven being with God, living forever, as Pastor said, billions of years, trillions of years, how he was emphasizing that. Living in beauty. And there's people out there who just think this life is the end. This is all I'm going to do. I'm going to eat out of a garbage can. I'm going to talk to myself. I, I, there's no hope. And yet we have that precious hope of, of, of the future. So what does the money that we have that we cannot take with us to heaven, what, 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 it, what does it really mean? It, it means nothing. If we give and we trust God that, Lord, you said, you promised, you'll take care of me, that's faith. You know? And I know it's hard for some of us. Pray on it. Ask God to give you strength. Prayer is key. And God will move you and God and you will grow. I found myself growing. I was just talking to my wife about it. I was like, man, Lord, you know how I teach Sabbath school. I'm all critiquing myself and am I doing it right? And my wife was like, honey, you're growing. You know, it takes time with God. God don't say run with me. He says walk with me. Walk with God. It takes time and we'll grow and, and, and God will bless. So um, in what ways have you experienced the great truth that is indeed more blessing to give others. Have any testimonies? Any, 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 any beautiful testimonies? <laughs> any stories? Anybody want to share? Or just. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, just recently, I, I went to Costco and uh, the Honolulu, uh, the Honolulu side, like last week. And there was like a man that needed, uh, he just got, like, he, he was going through like a bunch of trouble. You know, I could tell like he was like, he, he came up and asked me. Do you, do you have some some money you know and I, I i i was like oh i'll be right back you know i went to the bathroom i was going to go try and find some change because i only had like a 50 dollar bill in my wallet you know and the lord like really impressed me just to to give it to him you know and i started to think back like at least he was he was asking like back when i you know the old me i i used to go and take and take and take and he he really needed help you know and and afterward i got to like pray with him Amen. And, and like share my testimony and like there was like a, a moment there where it was like and it was such a blessing to to help him to see his face light up you know that he asked and he you know he got a blessing there Powerful. and it was awesome that's awesome yeah it does sound awesome that's beautiful amen okay again uh the experience that you have given for others and for for our church like that, you know. Like, uh, you see, when you give something, that it will, and will you receive something back too, you know. Because I, I had that, every time I give something, 
there's more that I get. <laughs> really, you know, like my job. I could sometimes, they call me about, you know, working like that. And, and after that, after I, I finished my job, they give me more extra money. Amen. I swear. Amen. Really, it's like when you give, you really have to receive something back. Amen. You know, you don't have to be, you know, like all thinking about. There's times that also I went to 7-Eleven over here. There's a young lady outside. She is probably homeless, very young lady. And she was asking money from me. And I said, okay, wait. I'll go inside. Instead of giving money, I bought food for her. Yeah. Sandwiches and drinks because I don't give cash money. You give food, you know, like that. Because there are a few times that ex I experienced that. But when someone out there at the grocery store standing asking you for money, that you feel you you feel that you can smell they're they're drunk, you know, they're drinking, asking money for. Said I buy this and that. I said no, I don't give money. I I know what what he's gonna do with the cash money. So to me, it's really better. It's really good to give. Amen. I tell you, do not hold back your money because, my my God, I mean, to me, yeah. Before from the beginning when I become Seventh Adventist, I was against the tithes, you know, for many years. My husband was was agree to give everything, but I hold back. Really, it doesn't help me. We got more bills because my kids at that time are going to private school and Seventh-day Adventist that it's kind of expensive and we have mortgage, but we have to believe. We have to trust God of what Amen. he said. Amen. And after that, I realized many years before I realized it's true, you know, God will not tell you if it's not true. So every one of us believe it. Just give, you know, no matter holding back your money. You give one dollar, five dollars. What is, you know, maybe someone, someone needed. One time I was at Don Quixote's grocery store, and I took out some of my wallet, and I forget I put in the, I left it out because someone called me, and I think I never put it back my wallet with my money and my ID and everything. And I'm looking for it. I said, well, I went to the customer service and asked if there's someone um, found it. They said, no, nobody uh, uh, returned or something. I said, can you see the video if there is someone? I said, yeah, I always carry cash money. And not only that, my ID and my, my other things, my card, was everything was stolen. And I was thinking, I said, maybe this person really needs the money. So I let it go. I mean, I did not bother me. I said, hey, man, Auntie, beautiful, beautiful. All beautiful stories. Okay, let's go to Wednesdays, family. Wednesday. Wednesdays is tithing on the gross or net income. So we calculate our tithing and our income. We are paid by the hour or salary, and we are paid on our increases or profit. If we are self-employed and have our own business in many countries, the government takes out taxes, so forth, to build roads, bridges. The question of gross primarily involves if we return the tithe to our in, um, on our income before and such taxes are taken out. Those self-employed legitimately deduct the cost doing business study. Have, I'm just kind of skimming through it. Studies of members have shown giving habits reveal the majority of Seventh-day Adventists tithe on the gross income. So... You know, I, I've been, me and my wife have been giving a certain amount of tithing. Just throughout the years, we just would give a certain amount. And when I read this, it was convicting because I was, you know, you, you literally take your gross and you deduct and, you know, you're like, whoo, okay, Lord, you know. Um, but it, it's, 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 it's a blessing and we've, we've um, come to do it. So you would take your 10% rather from your gross or if you, I mean, I understand some of us are, are on fixed income. But try, God. Just try. I mean, you know, take 10% of what you bring in and give it uh, to God. So, majority of the Seventh-day Adventists tithe on their gross income, as I was mentioning. 
and it's, uh, before taxes are taken out, you can find that in a general, uh, general conference tides principle and guideline in 1990. This includes federal state income taxes. So, Auntie, do we have a mission story? Um, Oh, okay. About well, five, uh, nine forty-one, I guess. I guess. Yeah. Start now, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, any final thoughts on on the blessings of beautiful tithing? Any final thoughts? Any? Yes. I do my diet, but me and my husband, we both work, so. He has his own paycheck. I have my own paycheck. When I do my tithes, I take the 10% of mine, bring to my tithing. I don't do my husband. Is that wrong? I mean, no. You're giving from your heart, but you would want to, how me and my wife do it is we put our money together and then take out the 10%. Um, I believe you'll be way more blessed, but you still will be blessed with how you're doing it because you're giving it from your heart. But it's a good start. It's a good start. And I, I, I don't want to discourage or encourage, try to seem, you know, oh, give everything. But it's a good start. And you just pray upon it. Pray upon it. Ask God. Ask God, is, is Lord, is this, is this good? Is, should we, you know, and God will give you the answer. And it all depends on your relationship because, like, I have a husband who's not a SDA, but whenever I used to tithe, I, like I do, I have my own check. He has his own check. So he doesn't say anything about what I do with my money as far as giving to the Lord. He did mention before that, okay, we were all living at home, Daniel, Michelle. We all tithe. He goes, oh, you, Daniel, Michelle, you guys all give me money. Oh, you're making your church rich, yeah? <laughs> I said, so I kind of explained a little to him. So now he doesn't say anything about it. But now he's starting to go to a church, Amen. a Christian church. Amen. And now I see him dropping off his tithe. So, Amen. you know, just pray about it. You yes. never know what God will work a miracle. Beautiful. And there was a blessing out of that. Yeah. Now, uncles, that's beautiful. That's very powerful. So, yeah. If, 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 you, if you and your husband, your spouse is not seen eye to eye, rem and show them, you know, show them the blessings. And, 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 and a, a you know, with God, we have to be observant. Observe everything. You know, Pastor Puya, he said, uh, write a journal of everything God does for you. I told my wife, I said, me personally, I remember everything God does for me from when I was a young boy. That's how much I love the Lord. For me now, I'm not trying to say I'm better than anybody or anything like that, but I observed every little thing from when I was, I remember I was five foot seven inches. My grandma told me, God is going to bless you with height. I said, Lord, please bless me one inch. I went next day, went to my bed, I grew an inch. God blessed me. But I can remember everything. And be observant and remember all that God does for you. So like, Auntie, we can be witnesses. Look, look, you know, and bring more people to God. But thank you, family. Um, we're going to have a mission spotlight video. Um, so, yeah, let's enjoy this mission spotlight video. Okay, okay, we'll just continue for now. Yeah, I believe, so that's Wednesday's lesson. Oh, that was Thursday, okay, yeah, we're on Thursday. Okay. An honest and faithful tithe. 
So we'll read 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. I'll read. Um, let First reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Let a man so consider it us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. As children of God and stewards of his blessings, what kind of people are we asked to be? Faithful. <laughs> faithful, family. Faithful. <laughs> it's, it's real simple. God is asking us to be faithful. So when we give or whatever we do, have a cheerful heart and, and give from your heart. Do it for, um, have faith. Be, be, be faithful. So um, the author points out, what does it mean to be faithful with our tithes? Especially with our tithes. So the amount... 10, 10%, as we know, of our income, that's 10 cents to a dollar, $10 to 100. Take to the storehouse, so we touched on that, so it's 10%. The storehouse review, the storehouse back then was the sanctuary with the children of Israel. Then later, Shiloh, with King David, the temple, then like um, Dr. Warao said, after Jericho, defeating Jericho, went into Jerusalem, and so forth, so, so on, and now, the storehouse is God's church. We believe it to be the Seventh-day Adventist church. Um, so, yeah, God gave directions, 10%, where he wants his money to go, who to help, honoring God with our first parts of our income. We touched on that. Using the right purpose to supporting the ministry. We know that our tithing helps to support the worldwide church and everyone that's doing God's work in, in it. Uh, it's our responsibility as church members to uphold these three first. It's responsible for the storehouse managers and to make the tides. So basically, we already elaborated on all that. Any any questions on, on, on that? Any comments? Uncle Dennis. Um, I have a question. Uh, Pastor Dennis, 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 Pastor Oh, well, basically, like if you're living on a fixed income, so if you're your social security or if you get your, 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 if you're working, it's basically talking this, this book, uh, Tiding Principles and Guidelines, helps for like businessmen, laymen, regular workers, people living on fixed incomes on how to go about deducting to give your 10% on paying your, your, your tithings. If, if you, to me, if you have multiple, if you have multiple, um, incomes, combine it and just take the ten percent from from um, it all being combined. This th th that's the easiest way I would think of it. Just take it all, combine it, and just take the ten percent from from all of it of all your income. Yeah, I guess he was just trying to give a. Yeah, it is. But just just ten percent of, and then you also now don't get offerings confused with tithing. Tithing is 10% and an offering is whatever you want to just offer to God. But there's no minimum now with, with tithing. It's 10. It's, there's nowhere in the Bible that says less than. Tithing actually means 10%. So step out in faith and, 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 and uh, be blessed. You know, um, I, I found it interesting that, like I, I mentioned this a thousand times because I just found this interesting. I will open the windows of heaven that you will not have room enough for you to receive the only time, the only other time you heard God said, I'll open the windows of heaven is the flood with Noah, with destruction. That just changed the way our, our, our geographical, everything changed. That same implement of windows of heaven being, being used as destruction is now that same window of heaven I will pour out on you as a blessing. So it's powerful because we all know what, you know, what happened with the flood. So yeah, um, and, and, Here's one of the only things that Auntie Patty was saying. Here is God literally telling us, try me. Try me. Come out in faith and try me. So it's a blessing. Um, any other questions, family, before we conclude? I think it's 1050. Yes, Auntie yeah. Diane. Our 
No, it, it goes, um, Anthony, so if you look on your quarterly, your quarterly tells you for the Sabbath school, um, when you give your tithes, it goes to the general conference, so the, the conference, and they distribute it to whoever's in need. So like I was saying before you came, so maybe if we were trying to reach uh, someplace in a remote country that is poor or something, and, and they're trying to start a church and funds, the conference will, will help them to, to, to support them in, in, in starting a church for God where the, the message of the Seventh-day Adventist church is not heard. And it goes to, to people like pastor. So pastor is literally giving up, you know, everything to follow God. And, and hopefully we support him and every other pastors, every other pastors, the conference will take care of that. So we're a worldwide church. Now, we're not just one church or a couple of it. We have we are all over the world. So it helps with all the missions, medical missionary, all of that. Your money, your, your money goes to help them. And, um, but like we were studying, this practice didn't start with us. It started back then with God first, back then. So it's nothing new. Um, okay, family, so I guess we can enter. Uh, yes, I think. Real quick, if you have questions about that, the taxes and things, it does say where in the guidelines to look for it. Yeah. Because it does say where in the guidelines to look for it before you ask somebody to help you. I don't know a lot about that. Yeah. You guys can speak to uh, pa Pastor Puya. He would he would know specifically. You can see where your where your um your finances is going and and so on and so forth. Um, oh yeah yeah yeah. Elder Ben is the the um uh, treasurer for the Hawaii conference. If you guys have any questions, ask Elder uh, uh, Ben. Yeah, he's our treasurer for the Hawaii conference union. So okay, family, that wraps it up. Uh, we'll start our main services and with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this lesson, Lord. In um teaching us that everything belongs to you, Father, that um, all that we own, everything that we have, it's, it's yours, Father. Uh, give us the spirit um, to give back to you, Father, in helping your cause in reaching everyone in this world, Father, to know Jesus, Father. Be with us in our main service. Bless everyone who has arrived. Give us the Holy Spirit, Father, and let us all rejoice uh, on this blessed Sabbath day. And all these things we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
<laughs> Mic test. Yeah. Happy Sabbath, church. Aloha. How are you this morning? That's good. Um, I want to welcome each and every one of you to our church service this morning. And I want to take this opportunity to thank the Lord for giving us this day to worship Him and to gather this Sabbath day as we fellowship together and share the love of God. Um, I also want to give a special welcome to all of our visitors who are here with us today. I see um, new faces. Please raise your hand because I went and checked the guest book and I didn't see any uh, one who signed their name on the book. So can you raise your hand? Brother Nick, I'm sorry, Michael. Welcome to Waipahu Church, Brother Michael. And uh, who else? Oh, <laughs> I was wondering why you're raising your hand, Greg. <laughs> and I know we have a family to my, to my right. Welcome to Waipahu Church. Okay. Now let's move on to our announcements. Okay, I have quite a few for announcement today. Uh, let me start with the Pathfinder and Adventurer Club. Um, tonight, we have uh, the Bible experience practice. It's, uh, 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 they're trying to prepare, the Pathfinders are trying to prepare themselves for a Bible Bowl. And this is going to be in a few weeks. February 4. So we have a couple of weeks to prepare. So Pathfinders, please be there tonight at 6 p.m. And for the adventurers, we also have something prepared for you uh, for your honors. So you have honors class and we have um, Uncle Greg and Auntie Dolores as your teacher. So please come tonight. And we are also looking for more teachers, more um, uh, volunteers to teach our adventurer and pathfinders and if you're interested come see me or Colleen and tomorrow Sunday um, our children are also preparing for presidential fitness this is um, every year and the practice is at the Ramirez Park <laughs> Ramirez Park. Yeah, you should see their park. It's huge. Uh, at what time, Auntie Colleen? 9 p.m. Bring uh, 9 a.m. <laughs> Bring water and uh, comfortable shoes and maybe change of clothes. And um, did I miss anything else for Pathfinders and Adventurers? Oh, yeah. Tonight, please bring your Bible, your Path Pathfinder Bible. Um, and you, you, we don't have any particular chapters because for the uh, Bible experience, they are studying the book of John. And um, there is no certain chapters. So kids, you guys going to be tested on all the chapters. There are 21 chapters in the book of John. So be prepared tonight. Um, okay. I also he have here a flyer. Have you seen one of these flyers? Who's looking forward to our convocation? We haven't had it for a couple of years, two, two three years, two years. So this is in February 24 to 25th at Honolulu Central SDA Church. And I believe our church will be closed that Sabbath. So February 24, uh, and February 25th is our convocation, Sabbath at Central Church. All right, next one is Winter Festival uh, with the Hawaiian Mission Academy. It's a winter fest, and this is a fundraising event. It's a fundraising event, so please let's support our academy, our children who goes there. 
and um, there, there will be food and drink, live music, booths, and silent auction. And this is at Hawaiian Mission um, School. Okay. And next Sabbath, just a heads up, uh, we have a church business meeting. So everybody's invited. Right, Winona? <laughs> Everyone here. If you're a member here, please come. This is going to be at 5 p.m. with potluck dinner. And um, Auntie Colleen, are you planning to do PBE again, practice with the Pathfinders for Bible Bowl? So after, um, after the business meeting, Pathfinders, please stay here in the sanctuary so we can go over um, another uh, practice. We have two more, yeah? After tonight, we have two more practice before, no, one more. Oh, so we only have tonight and next week for the practice. Woo, okay. And Sunday is work B, so please cancel any appointments <laughs> on Sunday next week. <laughs> Come and help us here. Let's beautify uh, God's church. This is not our church. This is God's church. And um, we need um, everyone's um, uh, help to clean our church and um, bring it back to um, a, into a good condition again. So anything? Um, any more? Okay, we have one more announcement from Auntie Colleen. Oh, I just wanted to kind of um, share with you for the 10 days of prayer that we did with Pastor Puya. It was such a blessing. Um, and we prayed for everyone, uh, Waipahu Waianae Church and the global community of Adventists um, worldwide. And I wanted to kind of encourage you to keep coming on our Vesper every Friday. And we also have potluck 6 p.m. So please join us and continue keep coming and joining us for that Vesper. And um, I'm also planning for that book club that uh, Madonna was planning on doing it. We are trying to do it as leaders and uh, hopefully we could create our own book club in each church that we could disseminate with our parents because this is not only uh, for um, this book that I shared with you growing with uh, it says there for parents that has uh, uh, teenagers and young adult but also when when uh, Madonna tried to read onto it it's really for everyone uh, especially even those that are planning to have families, it, 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 it will be helpful. It will be helpful for each and every one of us uh, to grow with, with Christ. Thank you. Okay, it's now time for us to prepare our hearts and mind as we uh, move to our divine worship. Shall we all open our Bibles to Psalms 106, verse 1? Psalms 106, verse 1, and it reads, Praise the Lord, O give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Please rise for our introit hymn, 240, Fairest Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We thank you so much for the week that has passed. 
And now that we are all together in your house of worship, we ask your spirit to lead us in our worship today, in our praises to you, in the learning of your word. May everything be according to your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please remain standing for our hymn of praise, hymn 462, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Today, January 21. Local church budget. In Christ's parable of the talents, which we find in Matthew 25, uh, it seems God gives people what they have. Uh, we then develop and use these, and then we give an account to Christ when he returns. Uh, not everyone receives the same talents or the same number of talents. What talents has God given you? Some might be obvious, while others could seem minor or even uncertain. Let's take a moment corporately to consider what God has given to each of us. You can do this on your own as well. You might already have a clear answer or two from God, or maybe you need more time. Perhaps each of us should do this at least once a week. However, the next question for us to consider would be, what are you doing with what God has given you? Yes, it comes from God, but he gives it to you to develop and to use for his glory and for the benefit of others. Every uh, member present here, uh, please hold your hands out in front of you, just like this. Cup together. We're demonstrating that we are receiving talents from God. And let's, let's have a prayer. Lord, thank you, Lord, for giving each and every one of us talents. 
Even the little ones have talents, Lord. And may your Holy Spirit uh, reveal these talents to each and every one that uh, what we do with these talents may be used to glorify you, may be work or helping others. Uh, please move our hands and feet, Lord, to glorify you in this way that by we can render our tithes and offerings, Lord, more effectively, Lord, and you can manage that. Thank you for each one present here, and as we've gone through the week, may we remember uh, all that the talents you have given us and what we can do for you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then now consider what you're doing with God has given you. And use that, Lord, to give glory to God. At this time, we will be collecting the tithes and offering. Thank you. Boys and girls. So, what do you think we're, our story is going to be about today? You, you're right. You think right. <laughs> okay, our title is Fallen Trees. Have any of you ever seen a tree that fell and it's dead and it's rotting? You have? Wow, that's pretty awesome. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So, it says, dead people can't talk. They return to dirt when they die. The Bible says, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return, Genesis 3.19. Have you ever played with dirt or mud? When maybe not, you think so? Yeah, I know we did. We used to make little dirt patties. I don't know. We even ate dirt. I don't know. But, you know, back then it wasn't as filthy as probably now. I'm alive. I didn't, you know, get any diseases from all eating the dirt. Okay, so most children have played with dirt or mud, made little dud pat, uh, mud patties or little dolls, or clay dolls. It says, do you know that God made things out of dirt too? Genesis 2.9 tells us that out of the ground, the Lord made every tree grow. Verse 19 tells us that out of the ground, the Lord God for formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air. But that wasn't all. In verse 7, uh, tells us that the Lord God formed, what, who did he form? Out of the, the dust of the ground. God, you're so right. So, well then, what happens to these things when they die? What do you think what happens to the things that, when they die? The dirt goes to heaven. They turn into dirt. So whatever was formed ends up turning to dust again, right? It says, the Bible tells us that people and animals 
turn into dirt or dust. And the same thing happens to trees too. Maybe you've looked at a tree that died and fell down. Now it's just a rotting log and it may seem like nothing at all is happening to it. But there is something happening to the tree. This is a, well, this is a better picture, I guess. And there's another picture of the tree. Yeah, that's the tree that's rotted and it fell down. Oh, it just gives you more than one picture. <laughs> so you have something else to look. Okay. So, but that's not true. Quite a lot is happening. There's beetles and bugs and termites that live in the tree and they eat the wood. See, so the fallen tree still has a purpose. It's feeding other bugs. Okay, so various kinds of fungus can grow on top of it. See how this one has like moss growing on it? Yeah, so it looks like it's green grass growing, but that's fungus. Okay. Uh, these and many other things are all happening, uh, helping the tree to turn it back into dirt. Now let's think about dirt again. Does dirt know anything? Does dirt know anything? No, right. You're all shaking your head. Can it think? Can it talk to you or tell you what will happen next year? No, it's just dirt, right? It can't talk. You're right. Of course not. So then since... People turn to dirt when they die. It would be very foolish to think that you could ask a dead person questions and they would answer you. But it wouldn't be just foolish. It would also be very dangerous. Since people turn to dirt when they die and since dirt doesn't talk, if you think a dead person is talking to you, then it can't be the dead person. It must be one of Satan's angels. And that, of course, is what happened to Saul. He thought he was talking to Samuel the prophet who had died, but it was really one of Satan's angels. So decide today that you will never, never talk to anyone who claims to be someone who has died because you know then that's a, a, a lie. It is one of Satan's most dangerous deceptions. Okay, so as the Bible says again, let's read Genesis 3.19 again. For thus you are, and to thus you shall return. That's right. Okay, let's not forget that. Okay, so let's go ahead and bow our heads and have a prayer for before we collect our offering. Okay? Father in heaven, we thank you so much for another beautiful Sabbath morning. And we thank you for these beautiful children. Bless them, keep them safe, help them to learn more about you, Lord, so that they know the, the difference between right and wrong, good and bad. Bless them, keep them safe. And may you also bless the offering they are about to collect to further the children's studies at our SDA schools. Thank you again for your bountiful blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Testing. This moment we have reached the garden of prayer and I ask for those who are able to, to please kneel. And um, as we sing softly and tenderly, hymn 287.
of all who um, are able to kneel and pray. Dear Father out in heaven, please thank you, Lord, for uh, providing for us and uh, the care that you, how much you love us and, uh, you know, your, your greatness, your mighty God, that, uh, you know, you moved, you move everything, you control everything, you own everything. Maybe forgive us all our uh, weaknesses, Lord, and help us move forward and, and uh, look up to your son, Jesus, so we can be more like him. Uh, bless us in, uh, and remember things that you taught us in our Sabbath school lessons. And uh, I thank to you, Lord, that you, know, you bless us to support our church know our teachers we have good teachers and you do a good job uh, teaching the children and we have a good pathfinder leader and we have uh, you know all the officers of the church is a uh, so help support uh, our pastor you know our pastor Lord that uh, you bless him and and uh, all of us the congregation be with the, the, the sick uh, people who have cancer and uh, you know we have family that uh, are sick too and uh, please hear our, our our personal prayers that we we speak to you today and uh, and I know you listen to every one of us even to the littlest one of all in this church a small baby boy and a small baby girl, you love each and one of them. And uh, be with our speaker today who uh, will reinforce us and uh, you give him the message that you want to share with us uh, about being certain and being strong, reinforcing us. Uh, I pray in your son's name and thank you for all your blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, Church, again. Our scripture reading for today is found in Philippians 1, verse 6. And I'm reading uh, from King James Version. It says that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's always a blessing to um, be here and fellowship with you guys. If it was 
Sabbath, uh, all of you. I bring greetings from our conference uh, office there in uh, not far from here. And uh, it's just a pleasure to be with you again and celebrating Sabbath. So this church is a complete church. As I sit down and look at the activities of from the, the old to the young, everything is complete. And to the food that's prepared always in the, in the side here. And uh, I'm just so blown away with everything that you do. Yeah. We in the conference, we always pray for all the churches. But Waipahu is one of the churches that are as a complete church. Uh, you might not know, but we always hear good things from your pastor about how you guys are doing. So it's really a, a privilege to worship with you and, uh, and to just listen to the songs. Thank you, Eden, for that song that I grew up with that song. And so that brings me all these things back. So, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for making this Sabbath a beautiful Sabbath. So, um, especially the children's story, it's, it's a hard, it's a doctrinal, we usually just throw a little moral story, but this is so doctrinal. So it's, it's not easy to bring children's story talking about the dead. But that was excellent, Colleen. You, you always do good stories here. So thank you so much. I want to shout out for Tony and Michelle in, uh, with the music today. Eden, for sure. And uh, um, who else do I need? I miss here with the music. I'm a music person, so therefore I appreciate all the talents that you provide. And uh, of course, not least Greg with Sabbath School. I, I miss Sabbath School, but I know he always leads beautiful Sabbath School over here. It's excellent. I know I'm late today, but I know that there's always interaction happening in this church. People want to, to uh, share what they know about God. And that's, that's what Sabbath School is about. It's not about teaching, but it's about collaborating. It's about exchanging things. We all study at home. Now is the time where we exchange information. So very, very nice. Uh, I'm also impressed with the uh, with uh, Bernard, how the call of offering is with your hands open to God. So it, it, I'm really blessed. So these little stories carry on. You think that it's just an, another Sabbath here, but you guys are planted here for a purpose. And uh, we do not know when these doors are going to be closed forever, but as long as it's still open, I congratulate you by doing God's work here. The Pathfinder activities and the adventures, there's lots of activities are going on. And uh, I'm a person that believes in the development of our youth. And so when I see children in the church, that is, that is a sign of a healthy church. When there's presence, there's programs for the young ones. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Lord, we thank you so much for this time that we are ready to accept your word. Lord, please empty my mind and heart so that everything will flow from your throne only, not from me. May we all be blessed. And when we go home, we have the energy to serve you in the capacity that you have given us. So Lord, we ask your spirit to come to teach us to impress us, that we can be channels of your blessings to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I picked this topic not because it's special, not because it's generic, but it's just have something that we can carry on. January had started, and now we're already, what date are we now in January? Boy, we're almost done with January, and before it passed, I just want to greet you. Happy New Year. 
even when it's already several weeks past. Happy New Year. And uh, I hope that in this new year, we have a perspective in life, a more positive perspective. Even when we see the graphics goes up and down, you know, the prices of gas, the prices of food, you know, the politics in this country, and everything that is unknown, disasters that has happened in other places and can happen to us, and sickness that's always around, and everything is just a mystery in front of us. So what other message that we need other than we got to be strong, we got to be certain. In the conference, we have been working so hard in closing the year 2022. Uh, we're hoping that it's going to close nicely, but we are off a little bit, and therefore adjustment has to be made to make sure that support to the churches and the schools and to God's work continue. So I want to shout out to, uh, to our treasurers here that is continuously doing a great job. So, so I want to make sure that I don't I don't miss anybody. So Greg with the call of offering and uh, Winona and Leanne and continuously behind the scenes, continue to take care of our books. Now everybody have their cross. There are times when we come to a intersection that we need to make to the decision what is best for our lives. What is God calling us to do? So, in fact, when we meet in an intersection, when we get into intersection of life, it doesn't happen only in one day. Every day we are bombarded with intersection in life and we have to make decisions. In fact, not every day, in every minute or even every second of our life, we make decisions. And we pray that this decision could be always something that's strong to God. Because only God gives us life. In fact, God is the one that sustains us. So today I want to invite you to, to just a verse. Today is just going to be a short, I'm not going to preach a big, big sermon, but I hope that we'll be, we're going to be blessed by the word of God from the story of David. Why is he strong? Did he have did he had muscles? Oh yeah, he had muscles for sure. Otherwise he cannot stand, right? But big muscles like Goliath? Of course not. Right. Did he have bows and arrows and shields and spears and helmets and stuff? No. What is his strength? God is his strength. Amen. He said, I, you come with all these uh, weapons, but I come in the name of the Lord. So today, if you forgot all this message here, we come with the name of the Lord. We don't have to carry anything heavy. We just come with conviction that God is with us. Philippians 1 verse 6 And I am certain that God who began the good work within you, within us, within all of us will continue His work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Notice that I put a little yellow word over there. That word is certain. So it's not only like, well, we'll see. I probably have to pray seven more times. No. Be certain. Because it's true. It's not only like, well, let's see if God will plug in today or not. Let's see if God is taking a vacation or not. But we are certain. And this certainty is a certainty that brings us strength. It's not the muscles that we have. It's not the money that we have in the bank. But it is the certainty that comes from God. And Paul says, this is actually a, a message to the, to the Philippians. Philippians is one of the groups that Paul really fall in love because of their support 
It's likely the white power church that continue to be active and support not only the members, but also your community around here, your community service, as well as your supporting God's mission elsewhere. And his message today is, I am certain, and I'm also certain that God, who started the good work here with you, as a church, as an individual too, God has started a good work in you, will continue his work. He's not going to take a vacation. He's going to continue faithfully until Christ return. Now, certain. There are times in life where our certainty starts to wander. Certainty comes from knowledge. We cannot be certain until we know. And knowing is not, is not a guarantee that we're certain. We know that there's a savior. And we just know it. There are also people that know it. But until you experience Christ in your life, there is a seed of certainty. Otherwise, it's just noise. It's just, oh yeah, people that sing Christmas carols in the malls or in the radio. And, well, we know that, yeah, there's, there was a little child that was born in, uh, in Bethlehem and became the Savior. He was nailed on the cross. And, yeah, this, but until we experience Christ in our lives, then we will be able to feel the strength we can experience then it begets trust. We'll experience now, next time if I have something, I know where to go. I know what to do. I know how to pray because I have already experienced it. Other people's experience also could be our experience by us witnessing to each other. Did you know that the, the new church was not a was, was a church of people just gathering together and witnessing sharing their testimony to others. And the church became strong and stronger and stronger as people say, look, I gave this much to the church. And other people are like, oh, me too. And then everybody was in the spirit of giving. And the church was blessed and the church continued to expand. If each one of us come back with that little fire of the big church of the beginning, God probably could have come today. So in the conference, when I was talking to the president, I'm like, you know what? Can we make sure, how can we make sure that within five years, every household in Hawaii had already heard the gospel? You know, let's be strategic instead of like, oh, well, we have a church, we have a pamphlet, pamphlet and come as you are. But how can we be intentional to make sure that every household in Hawaii, or in your area probably, in, in Waipau, how can we be sure that in every homes, in every place, that the Word of God has been there? If I can approach five people, if everybody here can approach five people, how many people do you think we can reach? And if we are given five years, or two years, or whatever years that God has allowed us to live, how many people have we touched? It's not our job to convert hearts. It's the Holy Spirit that converts hearts. But it is our job to plant. And with certainty, we can do that. If we're not certain, then we're, we're wobbly. Uh, do I go there or do I not? Uh, this house looks like it's, it's, there's a big dog there. Uh, no, but if we're certain that we're doing God is going to work with us, and He's going to continue to work until He comes the second time. There is certainty. And with certainty, then there's courage and grit. Grit meaning that let's do it. Whatever happens, whether it's rain or shine, we're going to be doing. We, we got strength through our faith in God. Isn't it wonderful that this little verse is so powerful that now let's switch to the next, next uh, section of the word. And I'm certain that God, who began the good work within you. When did God started the good work in you? 
Anybody knows? When did God start the good work in you? When, or let me ask you another question. When did you, can you remember back in time when you first opened your eyes and say, oh, I'm alive? Do you remember that day when you were born? No? When did you realize that you're a living being? I can remember, right? can remember. But you know that actually the work of the Lord in you had already started way before you were born. It's in Genesis 1, verse 27, 28, and 31, it says, So God created mankind in his own image. So way before you before all of us were born, God is already processing you. Not only Adam and Eve, but all of us. He created us in his image. And then on the uh, next verse, it says, and God blessed them. Them includes not only Adam and Eve, but all of you, young or old, whatever. God blessed you to be a special being. And God saw all that he made, and it was good. God never created human beings and like, ooh, let's do version two. <laughs> no. It's, it's only because of sin that we start adding things into our, into our bodies and stuff. And if, I, if God knows that smoking is good, he probably had put a chimney on top of us and start puffing smoke. <laughs> But no, God created according to his image, and according to his image, he saw that everything is good. Amen. So, if we are only the believers in the whole planet, we are the most happiest person in the planet. So, when you know that you have a reason to be happy, what is preventing you to go out and share the happy news to others. Jeremiah 1 verse 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I have already consecrated you and appointed you a prophet to the nations. Did you know that before you were born, you already have your job description? He already knows you by name. He already knows that Greg is going to be teaching Sabbath school here. Every Sabbath. He knows that the people in the back is going to make sure that the, the, the computers and the electronics will work very, very good. Sometimes we forget them, but they're doing a very good job in the back, behind the scenes. And God used each one of you to be the prophet for all the nations. So never think that you are just a little person there. Well, Lord, I do not know anything. But you have been consecrated before you know it. You have been consecrated for a job. Now, what is the definition of a prophet? What, what is the, uh, well, there's a prophet and there's a priest. Like a missionary. Okay. A prophet Represent who? Christ. Represent God. He brings the message to the people, right? And the priest represent the people toward God, right? But all of you have been consecrated to be prophet. Amen. That you can share God to others. Amen. So, don't ever think that you're just, oh, I'm too old already. I cannot do anything else. No, as long as God still have and still life in you, He still needs you. He still can use you and He's going to empower you. When I, when I read this prophet to the nations, well, we got how many countries in the world? A lot. I come from Indonesia. My mother is Filipina, so I'm half Indonesian, half Filipina. 
I stayed in Philippines for a while and in Indonesia for a while. I know this is a, a predominantly Filipino community over here. I feel like I'm at home over here. And, uh, but we are supposed to preach to the nations. And how do we preach? In everything that God has given us, I guess. Right? Number one is your smile. You can preach through your smile. Right? Just your smile. It doesn't cost a dollar. It doesn't cost even a penny. Smile is free. But the effects of that, it was like, oh, those special people in that church in White Pao, they are special. Because the way they, they bring, they just smile at me. They greet me. I'm glad we have visitors today. And, uh, and some are wearing the Aloha uh, lei over here and continue to do the good job that the Lord has given you. Because he has consecrated you and has made you profit for the nations. So now, let's go back with him starting at good. Did you know that your life, our life, comes from God? And he instilled it on us and we become a living being. And this living being is going to continue until Christ comes. And this living being is not only going to continue until Christ comes, we're going to surpass that and we're going to live with him for how many years? Forever. So the life that started in you is not only, well, I'm just here as a person that attends church in Waipahu, that lives within, within Waipahu itself. But no, God is instilled, had started, created you, very special, consecrated, and you are going to be forever his. So it's not only that, okay, uh, we're just some, and then one day we'll just disappear. No. If we even die, he's going to resurrect us. And he, we are going to be with him forever. So if you imagine the universe with all the stars and stuff, and suddenly, boom, God created you in his own timing. He already knows that I'm going to create Gregory. I'm going to create Eden. I'm going to create Colleen. I'm going to create all of you for a special purpose. And this special purpose will continue, not only within our life here. So today, folks, we're just worshiping here. It's not only just temporary, but this is part of our eternal life. We're worshiping today. I'm hoping, I'm hoping very soon that we're going to be worshiping out there by the sea of glass. Let's continue. For I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work. Again, God never say like, okay, I created you. Now I put you on cruise control. Everything is good. And then he move away. No. Second Chronicles 16 verse 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord runs what? To and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. The eyes of God continues to go to and fro. He's busy. His eyes, I don't know, he's got two eyes, but he can see all of us. He's not just like Santa Claus that's just looking at little kids. God is a powerful God that sees everything. And then the key word is what? To whom, to whose heart is perfect toward him. So now it takes also us. How are you taking God in your life? Is he only a spare driver somewhere that will drive you from point A to point B? Or is he real in your work, in your life? From the time we wake up to the time when we go back to bed. Is he really real in our lives? And if he's real in your lives, we have certainty that God is at work. God continues to supply us with everything that we need. His eyes is running to and fro to make sure that we're okay. Second, uh, 1 Peter 3 verse 12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, 
and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Nobody does evil here, right? Nobody. I, I believe you guys are saints. Nobody. And if there's anybody, please, let's switch it back. Because the eyes of the Lord is all over the righteous. So his eyes are, to, are going to and fro, but his eyes are also to you as you continue to dedicate your life to God. Isn't it wonderful that actually God is faithful, is very faithful, it's only up to us. There are times when we just want to like, oh, you know what, I feel like yeah, it's got a bit rainy, and do I want to really go to church, or do, you want, do I want to really study the Bible, or oh, Lord, can I just put you in the shelf for now? It's up to us. The Lord is opening his arms wide, and he's telling that, hey, I'm on work 24 hours a day, you can pray to me, and I hear your prayers. It's only up to us to receive His blessing. If we're real to Him, He's real to us. Until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Until the day. So, my fellow brethren in White Bible Church, let's be faithful to the Lord. 2023 is still, there's still many, many months to go. There's still mystery. I don't know among any one of you, there might be trouble coming your way. There might be things that actually you carried back from 2022 that hasn't been resolved. There's still things that you're still facing, uncertainty in how you're going to continue in life. The Lord has his eyes upon those that is real to him. The, the Lord is real. There's hope, there's certainty that the Lord that has started the good work in you. He has started you in a good path and he had died in the cross to make sure, to seal that, make sure that salvation is within your grasp. And yes, it is within our grasp. Now, let us continue to pray. Let's continue to seek the Lord. Let's continue to do the work that he has, he has uh, assigned to us. And may the Lord give his blessings as we continue to devote ourselves to him. It's my prayer. Let's bow our heads for benediction. Heavenly Lord, I ask a special prayer for the White Pahu Church. I ask that you will bless them with a double portion of your blessing, each one of them, Lord. You know what everyone is going through. Whether it's health, whether it's relationship, whether it's financial, or what, whatever it is, Lord. I lift them up into your care so they can continue to be the beacon of light to this community. That in their actions, in their decisions, in their words, in their smiles, in everything that they do, will always come to represent you. And more people will know you through this little beacon of light here that you have placed in Waipahu. For the church here, Lord, may you continue to bless as they continue to foster the education of our youth, our old ones, everyone, that they will continue to be prepared so when you come in the clouds of glory, the families, the church members, the visitors, and the community will be ready and, and sing the blessed song together when we spend that Sabbath in heaven. Until then, Lord, I commit them into your care. It is in our request, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and keep his face to shine upon you. Amen. Please stand for our recessional hymn. Hymn number 526, Because He Lives. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
um, we also invite all of you to stay for our potluck. Our deacons will now dismiss you. Thank you.